what treason against your narcissist looks and feels like. You are considered a traitor to your family, marriage, corporation, and a satanic agenda. As you identify with God in the kingdom of heaven, you begin to identify and understand that the people, organizations, religions, social structures, your marriages, media propaganda, human governments, are in allegiance to their kingdoms. Most of the people in the world today are worshiping the little G-God of this world. There are two kingdoms, God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom. Satan's kingdom is characterized by unrepentance, entitlement, and being a victim. They engage in all the works of the flesh and allegiance to this kingdom. The world rewards these behaviors. Now, God's kingdom is represented by repentance towards all the works of the flesh in alignment with the fruits of the spirit and the seven spirits of God. It also means being in allegiance to God's kingdom through, again, repentance, forgiveness, breaking unholy soul ties and breaking and divorcing the kingdom of darkness and any allegiance that we have with it. So when I chose God over my narcissist, the narcissist will engage in severe retaliation against me through adultery and fornication and will plug into all the works of the flesh. He does this because since I'm considered a treason to the a treasoner to the kingdom of darkness, he comes against me with adultery and fornication. They commit adultery, fornication, hate, contempt, gaslighting, heresies, outbursts of wrath, smear campaigns, dissensions, triangulations, rivalries, pitting people against other people and bullying them, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, selfish ambitions, contentions, jealousies, envies, murder, drunkenness, and this can be sober drunkenness, just behaving like a drunk, but not drinking. Sorcery, witchcraft, envy, and they steal, kill, and destroy. This is their method of operation, their MO. The worshiping Satanist taps into the resources of the kingdom of darkness through all the works of the flesh against you, and their method of operation is to steal, kill, and destroy. That is their character and their identity and allegiance to the kingdom of darkness. They spin a false narrative to justify their acts of wickedness, to punish you for your non-compliance to their kingdom of darkness. And it's the opposite of implied consent to their kingdom. The narcissist punishes you by non-compliance to their kingdom, which is the opposite of implied consent, basically the opposite of agreement. When you are in disagreement with their kingdom. So think about the social media platforms if you don't support their narrative to support the kingdom of darkness, they will censor you. You are punished for your political values that are considered, quote unquote, conservative. This is happening to me at a marriage level, but it's also happening to families, businesses, corporations, churches, and everywhere in the fabric of our society. So my narcissist is abandoning and rejecting me because... because I am choosing to maintain my allegiance to God and his kingdom. So the narcissist and worshiping Satanists will embrace entitlement, victimization, reality projection, manipulation of reality to support their false narrative. The false narrative is Satan's reality, the way that Satan sees it. They are completely unrepentant, haughty, and arrogant. And they plug in to their allegiance to the kingdom of darkness through the works of the flesh. So worshiping Satanists is committing adultery against you because you're considered a treasonist person because you are no longer in allegiance to the kingdom of darkness. They must commit adultery as a crime against you because you are a traitor. I will use my extreme rage and the injustice that I feel towards the wickedness that the narcissist has done to me. I will become, I will become the battle acts of God against all the works of the flesh that are being committed against me and with their agreement and allegiance to the kingdom of darkness. We are in agreement to bind 
the enemies of our soul and the enemies of God and their network to the allegiance of the kingdom of darkness and to all the works of the flesh. And we are in agreement to plunder their goods, destroy their houses and put them into captivity under the curse of the law. We let go and let God and his angelic resources handle the problem and the injustices held against us. We allow God to unleash his vengeance as he chooses. <clears throat> the narcissist worshiping Satanist mocks me and persecutes me when I tell him that he is committing crimes against me in the kingdom of heaven. As the bride of Christ, as a bride of Christ, I am becoming one flesh with Jesus and the Father. So these are crimes against God and his kingdom that I represent. So this morning, the narcissist came home early <laughs> from work <laughs> uh, because his scrotum was swollen and it was infected and he was in a lot of pain. <laughs> okay, so it was everything I could do to not laugh all the way to the hospital. Um, so I realize that God is taking care of the worshiping Satanists according to his vengeance. <clears throat> but I did notice that when he first started to be in pain, I started to feel bad and feel sorry for him. And let me tell you, this is not empathy, but it is called implied consent. When I start to feel sorry for him, it's considered implied consent. We are in agreement with the narcissist when we engage in what I call complied consent, when we have sympathy for them. I mean, they call us empaths, but this is where we go wrong. Um, we can't feel sorry for them when God is taking care of them karmically. We need to renounce and reject our allegiance to the kingdom of darkness when we conduct implied consent, when we start feeling sorry for them. With implied consent, we become one flesh with the kingdom of darkness. This is why my narciss narcissist almost dies every six months, but never actually does. So in the middle of this, as I'm recording this in my journal, I kid you not, like the night before, I sat down and prayed to God to let him take care of the worshiping narcissist and his adultery and his fornication against me. And so this is going to be called the karma of the narcissist for committing adultery and fornication against me. I mean, this happened so quick within, I'm not kidding you, within four hours, this was happening. So the narcissist worshiping Satanist is getting his left scrotum lanced <laughs> because he has an infection. All right. So apparently the doctors told him that it's a very sensitive area. And so the radical left leftist testicle is going to be very painful. So I asked him if he wants to rename his appendage from Big Friendly to Sir Lancelot. So he didn't think that was very funny, but I did. Again, this isn't empathy. This is pure joy. So apparently the narcissist is going to be in a lot of pain from having his testicle lacerated. So I've been laughing literally all day that my body in my lungs like hurt I mean I'm like like gut gut wrenching laugh like it hurts to laugh like I laughed all day <clears throat> and then considering that I made reference to whacking of the willy <laughs> being a flesh lacked so yeah I made a comment a few days ago about you know Lorena Bobbitt whacking the willy and that this fleshly activity was something that you do in the flesh and this was an example of what uh how not to handle it. I mean, how not to let God handle it. So I did let God handle it. And ta-da! The narcissist scrotum is getting lanced and drained. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> All right, so he has no idea I have this channel and no idea I'm ridiculing him. So after all, the narcissist has been destroying my character, gaslighting my reality with his network against me and training his flying monkeys against me, completely anonymous to me. So this is karma and this is not empathy. They say empaths attract narcissists and, you know, empaths are con with narcissists. But this is not empathy. This is pure joy. 
So obviously, when you let God handle an adulterous narcissist, he doesn't exactly whack the willy like Lorena Bobbitt did, but he does lance the scrotum, which I think is the next best thing. <laughs> you know, God says, vengeance is mine. <sighs> so anyway, apparently the spiritual warfare I declared to the courts of heaven has been unleashed. All I had to do was nothing. So after I asked God to handle the narcissist and the worshiping Satanist and all of their allegiance and their network of people, the narcissist often ridicules me and says, and this is a quote from him, you and that fake ass God that you worship. Apparently my fake ass God that I worship is protecting me literally Psalm 91, least I dash my foot upon a stone but his little G-God of his world that he worshipped, not only did he not protect his foot from getting dashed against a stone, because honestly, everything falls on his toes. Like, it's really very funny. But not only that, but he allowed his scrotum to be lanced in surgery and drained. <laughs>